Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we have a special treat. A new TiVo printer, an Ender competitor. Um, well, small form factor competitor. The TiVo Michelangelo. Stay tuned. This is going to be a special episode. So, thanks to GearBest and TiVo, this is the TiVo Michelangelo. Um, I got excited about this one because it looked good. I love the all-in-one base. Wish it had more Z-height, but that's another story. So, you're saying, you already built the thing. Well, first of all, there's no building. This episode's going to be special because it's going to be uncut. I am going to leave this camera going until the first print begins. We're going to unbox this thing and get it going all in one sheet. I want to show you guys just how fast you can get one of these things going because this is not a kit. This thing is fully assembled in the box. <laughs> you pull it out, you level it, you go. That's pretty darn cool. So let's go to it. Foam packing, instruction manual. I love the fact that they include an instruction manual. The feet for the printer, a sample print from the printer, the knob and the screws to hold the feet on, US power cable, USB cable, very short, 512 gigabyte memory card, and a couple of basic tools for tweaking and adjusting. And it was something that's interesting that I'm glad they're doing this. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily my suggestion that caused them to do this, but this is something that I've asked them to do, and I've asked all manufacturers to do, and TiVo is doing it. The bag with the tools and the memory card and stuff on it actually says TiVo Michelangelo. This is fantastic, because now I can save this bag and any little bits and parts from this printer I can put in this bag and put in my drawer of printer stuff and know that this is the Michelangelo bag. So if there's anything unique or particular to this printer, it's all in here in the bag marked TiVo Michelangelo. That's fantastic. I wish all manufacturers would do that. Make a nice pretty sticker like this with your company logo all over it and put the name of the printer on it and make the bag big enough to hold all the little things that will not be attached to the printer that will be saved. This way I could put this in a box with the rest of my bags and know what this belongs to. Alrighty, printer is as is the new trend with the bigger manufacturers, it's all this, I'm guessing, laser cut. It's some kind of pre-cut, pre-formed foam chunks holding and protecting everything in here. It's ridiculous. It's this printer, I think you could drop this thing off a cliff and the printer would be undamaged when it hit the bottom of the cliff. It's truly crazy what they are doing with this packing foam now. There you go. That's the top half. And here's the printer inside the box. You see, it's fully assembled. Grab it here. Be careful, don't mess up your Z-Rod, although it is very well stabilized. I just slide the little bugger out. You can, I'm, I'm guessing it's not a problem to hold onto this by the gantry. Just don't squeeze that Z-Rod. You really don't want to bend that. You're not likely to bend it, but it's good practice to get in the habit of not messing up your Z-Rod. More packing foam. Everything is stabilized. There's even a piece of foam in here underneath the head of the printer so it can't bounce around. So everything is completely encapsulated. Like it's not just packed in foam, it's like vac pack packed in foam. I mean, it, everything is supported. This is um, what I've been telling people for a long time. The the problem with a lot of QC issues of these printers is probably in shipping. And it looks like they're fixing that by hermetically sealing everything up inside of foam, which is not a bad idea. <laughs> I'm very happy about it. There we go. Nothing else is in here. This comes off the back. This printer has a lot of very interesting new things that they're doing that I'm really excited about because I'm hoping we can use these things on our existing printers. So I need somebody to tell me if these things are electrically identical. So, take a look at this. 
I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but that little thing right there is your end stop. They're infinitely adjustable. There's a screw, a bolt right through the end stop, and I'm guessing a hammer nut inside, and you loosen that, and this thing moves back and forth inside the rail. No more end stop issues. That problem is now gone. You'll never have to print an end stop adjustment ever again. You just loosen that bolt and move this however you want. And it's optical in some way. It's not light optical. I put my finger over it and nothing happens. But when the machine hits it, a little light lights up inside there and it stops. So it's some form of optical um, end stop. And same thing on the Z here. The end stop is in here. I mean, that's pretty darn neat. I'm hoping that is something that we can purchase and add to our other printers because one less moving part, your end stop becomes more reliable. There's nothing in these rails. You can slice through them without a problem. Obviously, don't slice your finger. They even put a piece of foam underneath the plastic on top to protect the hardware there. They, they really went out of their way to package this properly and I have to commend that. I am hoping they are going to become, I think they are becoming another reality where they're going to put out good quality products and they're going to do it right and they're going to make updates and changes to the product to keep the, it going right. I mean, I think they're doing a good job. I hope they continue. I really, really hope. Because having two Chinese original creative manufacturers making good quality printers, that's only good for all of us. <laughs> that has me excited for the future. Oh, too big. It comes with the Allen keys, but my tools are just easier. So I'm just going to use my own tools. Screws into the bottom. Just tighten until they squish a little bit, that's what I do. The instructions are excellent. They're very simple, of course, but they're excellent, including leveling instructions. And the leveling routine the printer comes with is very good. And so far, I've got a couple of hundred hours of printing on the machine. It's very consistent and reliable. The leveling stays put. It doesn't drift. Am I missing a screw? Nope, there it is. I'm guessing these are the tower, the gantry. That looks like it's in the right spot for the gantry. I'm wondering what that's about. Maybe this isn't strong enough by itself. I don't know. I will take one of these apart and find out. Because I'm kind of excited for this machine. This is a stupidly easy way to get people into 3D printing with no effort. Hey, better print sample. My first one wasn't exactly straight. That one's pretty nice. Heat bed's already attached. You take your knob, you slide it on. Don't forget the plastic porn. Is there plastic porn on this one? Yes, there is. This one doesn't want to come off. There it goes. There you go. I know something like that. Belt is already tight. That belt's too loose. Okay, we're gonna have to tighten that one up. The other one came tight. That one I would deem too loose. See how it just it just flops? That's too loose. Same as your past printers. Tensioners built in. Loosen this one, loosen this one, tighten it up. not seem tight enough. Let's see, that pencil might work. Nope. This will work, I think. Yeah. Take a wrench, pop it in there on the bolt there. You can tighten that up like that. much better. You hear that little twang? That's what you want. So to 
tighten that up nice and easily. Just put your wrench on the nut in here and push against the rail and that'll force the bottom out. It's self-leveling so it doesn't twist up or down on you. Tighten it up, you're done. That's it. My other one I didn't even have to do that. It was tensioned plenty enough out of the box. I would suggest lowering the bed a bit. My bed was a little high. That's it, you're done. There's really nothing else to do. Put the memory card in and go. I'm actually gonna take my existing memory card. Since I already got files on it. There we go. There is no switch. If there is a switch, you'd have to open this up to get to it. My other one, I just plugged it in and it worked. And this one works. Screen lights up, says TiVo, Michelangelo, it's got the two hands touching. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I'm going to need this later. Now, one thing that really annoys me. Come on, TiVo, this isn't hard. Spool holder. What's the deal with TiVo not including a spool holder? Not even a printed one. TiVo, I know you watch my videos. I want you to listen to me. This is going to cost you 25 cents. I want you to go rip off the Ender 2. And I want you to put this spool holder in the box with the kit. Okay? It's three pieces. It's two nuts and the spool. Two nuts, spool, and this bracket. Put TiVo right on there. Put the little TiVo emblem laser cut in there and put TiVo on there. You'll like that. It'll look nice on the printer. Okay? Do it. Please. Include a good spool holder. None of this built spool holder sitting on the side of the printer crap that's garbage. Yuck. You've got two screws right here. Oh, need a bigger bolt. That was 2.5. Yes, it is three. You can use bolts, you don't have to add anything. You can order these from Creality if you want, or Hicktop. I got these from Hicktop. There's enough bite left for these to fit in here. I guess I gotta take this bolt off. I thought I can get away with it. There we go. Tighten that down. And there you go. You now have a spool holder sitting right on top of the printer. Makes this one of the ultimate plug and play portable printers. Because you can put this whole thing right in your car, just like that. I mean, anywhere. And your spool holder's all built in. All you gotta do is plug in a C13 cable and you're ready to go. So, how about some gold silk? I am starting to really like this arrow extruder that they knocked off. It seems to be working really well, even at higher speeds. And now that I know what that wheel on the back is for, I really like using it. Loading this thing is so easy, it's ridiculous. You push it in there, and you start turning the wheel, and it just loads. Hmm, it just rebooted. I wonder why it did that. That's interesting. I have not seen it do that before. So, prepare, preheat ABS. I'm going to do preheat ABS because this is silk. I run silk at 220, 230, depending on how fast you go. Heating up. 35, 5 degrees. This thing heats up fast, too. I guess without a heat bed to bother it, it just cranks away. It just goes. Now, there is one consequence to this printer. There, oh, this is tight as well. Wow, nice and tight. Very nice. Not a single wiggle. 
There's a tiny wiggle in that. I'm going to have to tighten that up. That's an itty bitty wiggle in there. Not much. But just enough to annoy me. And this is perfect. No wiggle at all. 125 degrees. How far in are we? We are 12 minutes in and the printer is ready to go. And that's me dilly-dallying, adding a spool holder, talking to you. <laughs> 12 minutes. I bet, you I, I bet you if I didn't talk to you, I bet you if I just sat here and did just this, I can have this printer printing in under 15 minutes, including bed level. Because that's all you really got to do. 200 degrees. Looks like they liked my dual fan design that I designed for the Ender. They got the, the two fans, the two pancake fans on the side with the blower. And they also got the 30 millimeter fan, same thing I made for the Ender. That works very well. I also like the fact that they're using real fan grills, like wire fan grills, so they're not going to interfere with the fans. You have a fan down here and a big open grill over here. It sucks air straight through the printer and out. What I'm thinking about doing is putting a second hole here and putting dual ultra quiet fans in here. This way I'll have the same airflow, but it'll be silent. This thing is actually pretty darn quiet. We are at 240 degrees. That was quick. I'm now pushing filament through to get it to extrude. Why isn't it extruding? Here it comes. I guess I wasn't as far in as I thought. There it is. The goo has appeared. Now I'm gonna turn down the temperature. Okay, now bed leveling. I actually like the way it does it. You go to bed leveling, you go to home me first. You can get an idea of how close it is by simply looking at it. And we are way low. Okay, so I gotta really crank down these screws. So I'm going to disable the steppers. How do I do that? Disable steppers because that back left one's a little hard to get to. So we're going to really crank these down. Watch out. Since you should have it hot. Although that doesn't really matter with no heated bed. Should do it. Bed leveling. Home me first. Then select front left. And it will jump to place. You want to see a visible gap. The way I home this thing is a little different than you home a regular printer. You can't apply squish. If you apply too much squish, it um, peels itself off the print bed because the bed's not heated. So it sticks to itself in the nozzle more than it sticks to. I just want to clear out the stuff that's in there. That's annoying. There it is. Use something to clear the um, ooze coming out of the nozzle. You want to see a physical gap. I'd say I want a gap of about, probably about 0.2 millimeters. Maybe even a little more. This is a gap that I would consider too high on most printers. Front right. Same thing. Tune it till you get your gap. Don't forget, clear the... This is one of the reasons I like doing this cold instead of hot. Is that you don't have to worry about ooze coming out of the nozzle messing up your reading. There we go. Then go to... Rear right. There 
That looks about right. Rear left. And uh, that looks pretty close, actually. I think I'll leave that. Okay. Check the front right again. Front left. Yeah, it's a little too close now. There we go. Alright, now, the trick I've learned with printing with this, this printer can go very, very fast. Well, they, all these small printers can go very, very fast. But if you go too fast in your first layer, you're not going to get anything to stick, because it's not a heated bed. Okay? So the trick is to use a skirt and a brim if your model is compatible with that, and to make your first layer very, very slow. I run my first layer at 10 or 20 percent. Okay? Once you get the first layer down, go for it. Crank it up. <coughs> But you've got to give that first layer a chance. So I always print a Marvin. It takes about 20 minutes. Let's go Marvin high temperature. So to print at 230. I turned it down to 220, so it's heating back up to 230. I'll have a, my link down below with the rest of the links for these printers and filament and whatnot. Also, there's a profiles link down there. I will have my profile for this printer there for both high temperature and low temperature. And I will also um, have my sample decode. So I have it doing its prime line. Might be a little too far away. Right, piece of filament. Come here. There we go. A little too far away. There we go. That first round, tear it off. Too much squish. There we go. Same as I always do, you do your live adjust. See how slow it's going. You want it nice and slow. And you want it hot. Go 20 degrees above what you would normally print your PLA. If you print your PLA at 200, make your first layer 220. You want it to go down super hot and sticky and super viscous. See? Sticking fine. Now, watch what this does when it's, um, it's done that first layer. It'll really crank up. This. Oh no, this isn't recording, is it? I'm getting errors again. Ah. Why do I get the feeling this isn't recording? There you go, you see it cranking up. When it says camera operation in progress, that's an indication to me that there's interference going on. I hope not. Alright, I'm going to bring you guys down here and show you what's going on. If that didn't work so well, um, I just reviewed the video and the audio gets screwy at points. I'm sorry for that. Looks like I cannot use that camera anymore until I figure out what's going on. I don't think it's the camera. I think it's the lav mic. I think the lav mic is accepting interference from some of my equipment around it. And it, interference is being injected into the camera. So I am going to switch up to a different camera configuration and record my next video because this is already at over 20 minutes. So today will be the setup and getting running of the printer and stay tuned for my thoughts modifications and sample prints from the Michelangelo I'm having a lot of fun with it it is a so far it's proving to be a very good printer although the one is giving me um, issues with the um, thermistor or the heater cartridge I, th I think the thermistor is fine I think the heater cartridge has a loose connection every now and then I'll get a thermal error and I'll touch the wire and it'll work fine so I think it's just got a loose wire but the other one's working perfectly and I'm having fun with it. I'm making here some extra prints that I've made. I got these articulated butterflies that I printed. 
and they are beautiful. <laughs> so stay tuned for more.